Welcome to the subject du jour, tulumnias and scale. Well, tulumnias and any kind of pests. And tulumnias and signs and symptoms of stress, not because of pests, but maybe because of environment, like no humidity, warm, dry winds burning out the tips. I'm glad that you're here, and I would appreciate it if you find this information helpful and it was of use to you to stop you having these issues way ahead of time before they manifest themselves. I'd appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up and consider sharing it with some of your friends and people you know who may also benefit from what's going to go on today. Thank you so much. This was going to be an Orchid Chores Diary video and then I pulled my Tholumnias from where they live on the west side trellis and despite being vigilant, <laughs> or so I thought, some of the signs and symptoms that I saw had me in a bit of a tiz and I was counting the months when I last used garlic alcohol. That was in March. Garlic alcohol is a fantastic repellent as well as killer of all things pests that would like to take our orchids down, but the repellent only lasts for so long. So I'm thinking April, May, June, July, four months, and we're in August and I, oh geez, this is a big mistake. This was complacency in action on my part, thinking I had plenty of time, but goodness me, time flies and we're in August and here we are. So we're going to make this a teachable moment and make it worth our while. I have quite a few tulumnias to go over and look at, but I will show you only examples like the one we have in front of us, which is a no ID, but it has orange brown flared blooms and it is currently in spikes. So she's not doing too badly, but what I want to show you before I really get into dealing with this orchid, what I want to show you are the crawler stages of scale. This is a fantastic time to deal with a problem. It is not going to harm the orchid. We're going to get to it in time. All these little white dots that could also look like ash from a fire, which we've had recently. Yeah, I was fooled once, but don't fool me twice. All the little white dots are little scale. And this here, for example, is an old leaf from an older fan. Now, it shouldn't deteriorate like this so quickly because the rest of the fan still looks fine and it shouldn't be declining. Sometimes Tulumnia fans will die back. This is too soon for it to be doing so. Seeing as it's on an older fan, I'm not particularly concerned. We'll be dealing with that. But let me see if I can show you how the scale has gotten into the crevices. Some of these may be dead, but assuming is not knowing. So this Tulumnia is going to get a complete once over treatment. And what you won't be seeing off camera is that every Tulumnia example that I show you, I am sterilizing my tools, everything I use with alcohol prior to moving on to the next one. There's no need to do it while working on one single Tulumnia, but in between the different Tulumnias off camera, I am sterilizing my tools again. So that was pretty easy. That came off without any issues. That was scale damage starting to manifest itself because in the crevice of this leaf, we have similar symptoms as we saw back there. Now, because alcohol has evaporative desiccating characteristics and that's why it works so well against scale or any kind of pests, and Tulumnia roots are so fine, including my very, very dry climate at the moment with no humidity, I am concerned I'm going to be burning Tolumnia roots if I use too much alcohol without protecting them first. So very, very carefully, what I'm going to do is make sure that my jet is at a minimum, but carefully, because I don't want to be touching too much of the foliage, I want to go around the basket and just make sure that the roots have some water on them to buffer against what possibly could desiccate the roots and that is when I start using alcohol. I'm trying to stay away from the foliage because I don't want the alcohol effect to be diluted by the water. Now it may not be necessary to do that but it gives me peace of mind and before we go anywhere else I just want to point out that this here is natural fertilizer from my Mr. Gecko who's out and about at night and you see that there as well but this browning here is also possibly scale but if it is hot, dry, and windy without humidity, the tips of Tulumnia leaves will start looking like this. And I have some examples that are more prone to this than this one. And well, that's just the difference in the hybrids that they respond differently. But to double check, 
what's going on. Maybe there was scale in there. Anyway, there won't be for long. So what I do is take my garlic alcohol and I spray it into the tiny, tiny space and crevices of each leaf and let that drip down into the leaf joint very, very carefully. And if I lose the spike because the alcohol desiccates the spike, it may happen, it may not, then well, that is something that I'm just going to have to forfeit because getting rid of the pests is my top priority because then I can get blooms again if I don't get rid of the pests. Tolumnias will go down very, very quickly. The tiny little joints in the leaves, around the base, everything is so tightly packed that it's just going to be history before you know it. So having done that, I'm just gonna wet my brush and start pushing the alcohol into crevices down towards the base of this little tolumnia. I'm also using the garlic alcohol at ambient temperature. I made a massive mistake last year when I took my garlic alcohol out of the fridge and doused an orchid after years of frustration that this one orchid was always plagued by scale with the garlic alcohol and <clears throat> evaporative cooling is what kills the pests. Evaporative cooling on a very hot day with the orchid exposed to warm temperatures coming in with cold garlic alcohol out of the fridge. Yeah, I literally cooled down and not froze, but cooled down the cell structure of my orchid so badly that I also had a teachable moment because don't do it straight out of the fridge in the middle of summer because the evaporative cooling of the alcohol will cool the structures down anyway. It'll do its job. Just keep it at ambient temperature. Don't bring it out of the fridge and straight onto your orchid. Do we have remnants in here? Yeah, you can see the crawlers down in there. There we go. And if we let that perpetuate itself, we are going to lose our tolumnia very, very quickly. And who wants that after we've revived them <laughs> from my nuking them with too much fertilizer in 2019? Yeah, those were the days when I thought 300 parts per million was a great idea to grow strong and healthy tolumnias, not realizing that my low humidity dries the media out super fast and the roots had no time to absorb any of that fertilizer and the salts, well... The salts just desiccated everything and I almost lost, well, not my entire collection, but they were seriously, seriously struggling. So I still have little brown bits down there, which if I can, I will remove because, you know, hidey holes, why leave them with some options to still stick around? And I was going to make this into an orchid chore video. That was the plan. And then I thought, whoa, there's so much going on. I can't make this into an orchid chore video because this is beyond a chore. This is a real necessity right now. And I saw so much going on. I thought, you know what? Separate video because it's not all about scale damage. And then you wonder, well, how did this happen? Well, I have Benjamini Ficus trees in my vicinity and my orchids are pretty much scale free. And the Benjamini Ficus trees do not get garlic alcohol on them ever and all the scale is on the Benjamini Ficos trees and eventually they will start to migrate over to my orchids if I don't keep up with at least the maintenance, the repelling of the essential oils of the garlic. So that was my mistake. Time flew. So counted back. I'm like, yikes. No wonder. And also for the first time ever, my Dendrobium tortile is also struggling with scale. It has never had scale issues in the past. So that's a new one for me. And my Tolumnias live next to the Dendrobium tortile. So you see, we're sharing the pests just because of their close proximity to each other. But never mind. We got to this one on time and it'll all be A-OK -okay because now I know. All right, now that we've cleaned her up, the symptoms you should be looking for if you cannot see scale in your tolumnia, there are signs that it is happening even if they are all the way down there and you couldn't see the crawlers like I showed you right at the beginning. Indentations in the leaves. They are sort of uneven right here. 
That is a sign that scale is there or has been there and has moved on. Closed leaves like this, that is because the scale is in there, has moved on, been there, whatever, but is destroying the cell structure so the leaves close up to protect themselves and safeguard against any more damage or decline dehydration through the hot dry winds. If my orchid didn't have any scale on it and she was doing this, then that is environmental. That is not pest based. But seeing as she was with the crawlers, that means that an adult was somewhere and had time to manifest itself and reproduce. Then, a sign like this, that is then a good, good indicator to really go in and have a very, very close look. You can see the fine, fine little infrastructure down here around the base of the Tolumnia, but you can see how easily my paintbrush bristles can really get in there. So this is the best way that I can recommend after letting the alcohol trickle down the crevices of the leaves, go in with the paintbrush and really push it into the leaf joints down there. If we cannot get out any bodies, at least the bodies will remain, but they will be dead. So that's one taken care of. I shall continue about my business going down the row and see if I find anything else that I can share with you based on a different example. Here is a beautiful Tolumnia that I really enjoy because look at how it's growing or trying to grow. This is my Tolumnia brown spots. And you can see similar symptoms. We've got that yellowing of the leaf tips, environmental or scale. In the case of this fan, it's environmental, but that doesn't mean the orchid doesn't have scale because we can see the ridges and indentations here on one of the newer fans, not the new growths as such, but there is something going on here pest-wise and we will be addressing it. And then upon a closer inspection, we can see adults on the new growth. <laughs> you think? Now, some of these are dead, but there's no guessing. When it comes to Tolumnias, there's no such thing as, oh, I think they're dead. There's only one way to go about it. Oh my goodness, I've got scale. Let's get a move on and let's get this Tolumnia cleaned up and protected so that she doesn't go downhill. Make sure that when you do this, if you have a similar situation, no matter what orchid it is, that you're doing it on a nice breezy day, not gale force, you know, make it pleasant for yourself to be outside, but do it on a breezy day because the next question of course will be, what about the water in the leaf joints plus the alcohol? That's a lot of wet, wet, wet going on down there. And Tolumnias are prone to rot out easily. If you have a nice warm day or if you're inside and you have enough airflow, it's going to be A-OK -okay because there will be no rotting out before the orchid dries out. It's going to be just fine. But you cannot skimp when you're doing this. If you're in doubt, continue. Just until you feel comfortable, that you've done the maximum that you could, and then you have to observe the Tolumnia from here on in, because what can happen after a treatment like this is that scale will start to activate and they're going down in the crevices, but as they are getting suffocated out, they will start to emerge from those crevices and look for air before they die because die they will. They can only hike so much up a structure before they just peter out and become like a, you know, a dead body on your Tolumnia or any orchid for that matter. And seeing as we're dealing with Tolumnias today, there's only so much that they can get up and out before they literally peter out. So know what you're looking at while you're cleaning the orchid. Take a little mental picture or actually a picture of your orchid before you put her back in her place and then Keep an eye on her for the next two or three days and see if you see any more bodies crawling up and they'll maybe show up to this height right here or there. And even if your orchid only had crawlers on it, it's at that point that you start to treat the orchid that the adults will start to emerge. They'll be dead. Don't worry about it. But emerge they will. And then you're thinking, oh my goodness, this didn't work. It did work. It's just that they were coming up for air. Here is an example of a Tolumnia that did have scale a while ago and is scale free, but because she's living in the same space and location as all the other Tolumnias, it is very, very highly advisable and recommendable to treat even a scale free Tolumnia if the living space is very, very close 
proximity to the others. Here you can see the result of the scale from a long time ago on this fan, but it hasn't returned. And good on her, she's starting on new growths. Very, very tiny, but there's a new growth right there and another one that I saw a little bit further in. So because this one didn't have scale, I want to show you how the leaves can close up as well due to environment, all right? This is environment, they also close up if it gets too dry, including the warm wind. There is no reprieve, not enough high humidity, so the leaves will close up. So this is not scale-based, this is environmental-based. But once again, just a reminder, it's better to be safe than sorry and have a once-over just to make sure and not rely on the fact that the conditions in your climate environment are not doing this to your orchid. Have a look. Another symptom of the post-scale effect is what you see right here, how the leaves down here are going brown. Close proximity to where I saw the scale, they were doing the damage on the leaf joints here. So we can double check and make sure that they are gone and we don't see anything white. And there's nothing there. She's gonna be fine. Here you see a Tolumnia that is looking extremely desiccated, but she is one of my hybrids that is not a happy root grower. You can see old signs of scale right here at the leaf, right there. See how that is a little bit chomped away? That is scale. This kink, don't worry about it, that is mechanical damage. But you can also see signs of scale where they used to be right here, the indentations. So this orchid is scale free and if we were to see any bodies, those would be dead bodies. But she is not a happy root grower, so you can see how she's conserving energy by closing up her leaves. That is normal if your environment is not blessed with high humidity and is very, very hot. Here is a dead scale. All right, this orchid was treated back in the day in March. So this scale was not on the orchid when I put her back on the shelf. And here we have an adult scale that is dead, but it was all the way up here. If this was alive, I would tell you, I promise you, but when I took it off, it was crunchy. A live scale is not crunchy. Even though they have a hard outer shell, it is not crunchy when you squish them. They are actually quite um, squishy, for lack of a better technical term. But again, if there was something up there, I'm just going to put some garlic alcohol on it. And you can see that the rest of the new growths, just starting here, they're doing fine and growing roots. So that is important for this one. Roots. She doesn't grow roots very, very well, and I can only water so much without the risk of rotting her out. She may be a great candidate for semi-hydro. But look, see? Here, everything that looks round, you would think, up oh, that's scale, it's not. Those are the scar tissue with the anthocyanin where scale did the damage, but it's healed over. I saw another body of scale right here. Let's have a look. Crunchy dry. Crunchy dry, there's nothing in here. But you see, it crawled up from the crevice back in the day and since then, I haven't looked to see if anything has moved up. And since then, after checking several times, these guys will still try to emerge and do their thing. But it was dead. And then just a little bit of a spray with the water so I don't desiccate the roots by then adding alcohol. And yeah, this is what I'm doing with all of them because they all live together. And another thing I've done the trellis where they all live during the summer months, I have sprayed down with garlic alcohol as well. So they're not going to go back into their position without having treated that trellis with garlic alcohol. I did that before I started the video. It will have evaporated by now, but at least then that area is also somewhat sanitized. This Tolumnia Gyrac Firm White is my worst example. Well, I have two others, but they've been clean and that's why I stopped doing what I was doing and started a separate video. Because you can see how this side is badly affected to the point the leaf is just coming off. So I may be losing this entire side right here. We've got scale there. And you know where this one was located? Right up against the corner that I hardly reached, even though I was walking around the trellis, lifting the curtain and trying to inspect everybody through the curtain. Yeah, 
So this side here may be completely lost. There's little bodies everywhere, even though they may be dead. Clearly, whatever happened has taken a hold and this, this side here is gone. So we're going to be cleaning that up. Now, saving grace for my firm white is right here. I've got a new growth coming, so we're going to try and protect that and make sure that she stays with us. We've got right here, very closed leaves, because look at that, right in there. So she will be dealt with, and I was waiting for spikes to be absorbed because scale can travel up spikes, so I've been watching out for that. But they were so happy in the crevices, who needs to travel up a spike and become exposed and get killed if they can manifest themselves at the base? So I'm going to be cleaning her up. I'll try and do it in fast mode unless I see something that warrants me stopping. And then timestamps are in the description if this is rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat kind of video. But you know, some people like to see a cleanup. Look at this. Look at them in there. I'm going to get that leaf out and I'll show you. But I wanted to show you on this orchid was what I mentioned earlier, old fans dying off in the back. That is normal. They also have a progressive growth habit. So if you see a fan dying off, that doesn't necessarily indicate scale, but look at these little ones right here. Also on an old fan, so I'm not concerned. The rest of the orchid is pretty clean. So the garlic repellent worked on that one, but look at this. Let's check these out and see if they are alive or if they are, they're dead. Very, very crunchy. So that's a good thing. They actually just went crunchy and had a dry sound. That's awesome. If you think that white is crawlers, it's not. This scale here has this kind of a texture when it's dead and I, when I crush the bodies, that's what it looks like. Because crawlers will look like that on an alive scale as well. They do have that white powdery look about them, but it was the sound that convinced me that they were dead. So take out this lower leaf down here. It's not serving a purpose. Beautiful new growth coming right out of the basket there, of course. Why not, as you do? Got so much space to grow up, right? Ignore my light training. Ha, thank you very much. This is just a quick once over, but I wanted to show you something and give you three seconds to look away when I start counting. I wanna show you what live scale looks like against a white facade when I do find them. So look away for five seconds in three, two, one. That is what live scale looks like when I squish them. They leave a residue. So they might have a hard shell, but they don't. They get really soft and they ooze when you squish them. Another thing, I don't know if you can see this here, but I hope I have taken a picture of another Tulumnia with scale on it. Be aware that scale will be on your roots, even if you don't see them on your leaves. They're spotting on the pristine white velamen. I had little bits of scale on the roots. Keep that in mind that scale will sit on the roots as well if all the structures are protected. This is my Tulumnia firm Dalmatian. It's been struggling, but it's looking a lot better than it did at the beginning of the season. It struggled through the winter and spring. I thought I was going to lose it because it was kept growing new fans during the most horrible season that I've ever experienced since I own this collection. And here we have live scale. That was a live one, was. Emphasis on the was. And their scale on the roots at the bottom of this fan right here. I'm gonna insert a picture, at least I know I've captured this one. So they are coming off and they look alive to me. Nope, they're dead. Yay, they're dead. Because if they were alive, they wouldn't come off this easily. That would have been a little bit more difficult, so. Hooray! At least they were dead, but make sure you check roots. Look, I don't have any stocks or shares in garlic alcohol, <laughs> but I do swear by this stuff just because it protects the structures from the pests. 
The fact that they are going to the roots is proof in the pudding. She's looking much, much better. When I see something like this, that is probably remnants from a while ago. Not concerned about any scale infestation on this one, even though we saw that one live one. But it's gone and it didn't have time to manifest itself. So got to keep an eye on this one. She is weak. Don't want to lose my Dalmatian. And these are the two I started with, as in Orchid Chores Diary, and I'm like, hold up, stop what you're doing, and yeah. You see here we have one that is also looking relatively weak, very weak at the back, all scale damage back there. I have a great growth coming here, and I'd like to keep it that way. As was the case with the other one, we may be losing the back part, but we have the front part to protect and get growing. So this one was badly affected, and here, showstopper is my golden fire in bloom beautiful beautiful blooms this is why i fiddle and fandangle and i hope that you never ever see anything like this on your telumnias and if you do get your garlic alcohol out and do what i just did and look for the right symptoms this one was also cleaned up if i can lift the basket up because it was showing signs of dehydration even though it had fantastic roots right in the back here so it was time to do a cleanup and it was all just going to be these two during orchid chores and here we are i really hope that this video was helpful and you enjoyed some scale being killed i mean who doesn't like that right death to scale if you've made it to the end of the video thank you very very much know that you can do this indefinitely if you're still in doubt after 24 hours, 48 hours, repeat the procedure until you are comfortable with the fact that you've done the best that you could, even if they may have some signs of damage. I do not like seeing damage on my orchids, but I comfort myself in the fact that I am not growing these to go and take them to a show because if that were the case i would get even more annoyed and i don't want to get annoyed with the orchid hobby the challenges are all around us all the time and we're doing the best that we can getting annoyed is something that we should try to avoid so i'll stick with the damage as long as they keep blooming like this and i'll do my best to continue to protect them from anything that wants to take them out thank you very very much for watching your time is appreciated if you have any questions that i didn't cover any doubts with regards to what's going on in your collection tolumnia wise symptoms wise let me know in the comments let's get into specifics down there meanwhile i wish you a fabulous day on one condition though that you please stay safe take care bye